I think I'm a minute late. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? Talking shit. That's right. Talking shit on uh, the on the channel every Tuesday, 8, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We talk shit with the fans here. Uh, today, what we're going to talk about, uh, Turbo versus Blower, what's right for you? Um, the reason I bring this up, and I brought similar subjects up before. <laughs> I don't know why I have my deodorant here. <laughs> my deodorant's just sticking there. <laughs> the reason I bring this up is because a lot of people ask me about setup questions on Patreon, on, on Facebook. Actually, I don't do Facebook shit anymore. So if you have me up on Facebook, that that that, that message goes into the ether. I, I don't I don't reply to Facebook messages anymore. If you want to get at me, you got to pay me. That's just how it is. You got to get at me uh, on Patreon and you can get at me there, pay 15 bucks a month. If you really need to get at me, get at me there. Uh, I'm sorry. I just, it's just too much, too much shit going on. So a lot of people typically make the biggest mistake of sticking with a combo from let's say low horsepower all the way to big horsepower especially blower guys and we'll talk about why blower guys eventually are gonna end up going turbo even the luns know that there is a limit on the black bean to let's say run a number like the black bean ran sevens once with a 3-0 whipple and ever since then it's just kind of been off to the side because with the 3.8 Whipple and the 10R80 that's in it currently didn't really show any better performance than the 3.0 Whipple did, basically. They haven't gotten it out there too much because there's no motivation, but it made me think, at what point should you consider going turbo? And a lot of people need to understand that there are benefits and drawbacks to both combinations. We'll talk about the benefits of both combinations, the drawbacks of both combinations, and what is the base, the best use case scenario for each power application, because it, each power adder, because it's not just universal. It's not just blow is better for dig racing, turbo is better for no, no, no. It, it, it's 100% conditional. I've had my fair share of blower cars. And I'm just going to start dabbling into turbo stuff with the Fairmont. By the way, it is done at the chassis shop. I will tell you the amount. I will tell you the amount of work. I'll try to get you guys photos. I don't know if I can do it during the show, but we will do that and more, but not before we say hi. And Mr. Bill O'Reilly says hello to the people here. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Fucking thing sucks. It does suck. PMAS, thank you to PMAS. Appreciates the people that attempted to help him out with a logo. He has paid somebody, so he doesn't need our services anymore. Nick James at PMAS. Dina Have Performance, Dina Have Performance.com, Dina Have Performance on Instagram, Dina Have Performance everywhere. Any parts you want to get. Fuel system, injectors, wheels, tires, superchargers, whipple kits. Dina Have Performance.com is where to go. Pride Farm, PartsFarm.com, paid their bill check out their website for all things pull out hey yo parts for coyote mustangs late model camaros you name it they got it they got motors they got deck lids they got everything wheels tires suspension setups check them out caliber transmission caliber transmission.com doing really well with the 3160 tremec stuff he is saying the tremec 3160 stuff is really popping off bellac bellac industries the best deal the best wheels if you deal drugs <laughs> He's in Miami. Toyota Solution, Robinson on Toyota Solution, and MFP, MFP of Australia, MFP. Oh my God, what the fuck did I do to this thing here? Oh gosh, you know, every single time I click something here on uh, OBS, it just goes to shit. Let's say hi to the people here. Uh, do, did I do the? Did I do the live chat? I always forget to do the live chat. I'm always unprepared. I apologize, guys. Let's get your name up on the screen, and we'll get to talking a little. Bit. 2000 MCR, Kim Phillips, Monty 40 Leon Phelps, T-Rock, Fox, Joe Swish, I'm Hunk Solo, B. Levesque, Corn Fred, Cal, Clean, Anna 3GT, Douche Did It, Travis Dixon, Pito, Chiquito, Ray Ray, Maki Mock, Alfredo Diaz, Mendoza's Coyote, The Jocko Bell, Mini by Bandman, Eddie, uh, Winslow, he's done. can't wait to see that bald head. <laughs> Mendoza, Sam Rollins, El Patron de la Cerveza, Mini by Bandman, Bryson Whip, Boxy Luxury, Adonis, Boom Bye Bye, what's up Boom Bye Bye, he's a local cat here, I think he's Port St. Lucie. Michael Locks, uh, Jocko Bell, Coyote Fury, Raiden, Smokin, ZX14, Carters, Michael Loreno, Boom Bye Bye again, Eva Galarga, Paul Ponthew, Robo Style, John Jones, Phil Fez, Boom Bye Bye again, Drew P. Webos. Christian Duran, Mini by Batman, Johnny Boy, John Bailey, Corey Seward, Gregory Ovich, Bryson Witt, Bryson Witt again. If you guys want to join, there is the link, the Patreon link. Not so, Joshua, uh, Reflex, Joaquin, Bryson Witt. Someone just hit me up. Who the fuck just hit me up here? 
Oh my god, he you can't hit me up on fuck you can't hit me up on Gmail for setup questions. Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. I am not answering anything for free on fucking Gmail. My Gmail is full of dumb fucking questions. Chris built bu- bu- built boosted th- built boosted three valve. Whatever happened to that cuck ass bitch that was supposed to build a three valve and beat the shit out of everybody? Didn't he put underglow in that shit and he just hangs out at car meets or at uh, uh, pot dispensaries and hanging out with his stoop. Oh my god, what the hell happened with these three valve guys? Venom 956, cuz Dre Day, Big L, Nick, Nick Nair, Daniel, cut Yodi, Bondo Bird stopping by to hit the like. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Where's my lid at, bro? Hey, Bondo, is my lid in the in the in the is my lid in the in the uh in the assembly line like is my lid there the ydbt logo what's going on with all that shit and everyone else that said hi dj lux eo dre day net juice slug okay so at what point should you consider going from blower to turbo well many 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 reasons so i'm gonna give you an example hush money hush money was an 880 rear wheel horsepower coyote swap fox body the only place it hooked was 40 miles away in Mexico, on this concrete road, one specific concrete road, and it was still kind of spinning. I had to put 150 pounds of sand in the trunk, in bags, and then I, basically sacrificing time just to see if I can get a four second 60 to 130 time with it, and I was able to do it on this run. Take a look at the keys when I do this hit. See, spinning, not fun. So I had to go out and do it. You know, it's already wasted. I got the inlet air temps hot. I got the trans hot. I got a bunch of stuff hot. It's not optimal because it's just so aggressive on the hit. Shit flying everywhere. All this dust is nasty. Yeah, the drag year was obviously late, but it did it do it did do a four nine sixty to one thirty again. It wasn't the most efficient setup, but then I started thinking, wait a minute. So you're telling me a coyote swap? Fairmont, that weighs 3,500 pounds race weight, can get beat by a 10R80 car with an ESS fuel system and a 100 millimeter pulley. Absolutely, because the ESS hits a little softer down low. The IRS in your Mustang S550 chassis is better suited for roll stuff. And um, if you have a fat tire back there, even like a 315.50 or a 305 45 17, You'd probably beat me. And I have a coyote swapped fucking fox body, essentially. So it's not just a very, at a thousand horse, you got to go turbo. It's when you want control. 100% control. So with a blower, you can't really ramp in power unless you do really fancy stuff with the throttle. I would never even attempt to do that remotely. It is something that requires not only a bunch of vetting, but it also is conditional based on the road you're using. If you're using concrete, well, the car might hook better. If you're using asphalt, not so much. But on that same exact concrete road, if it's a little cooler a day or two later, that tune will feel lazy on that street and you might be able to get away with more, but you won't know until you actually tune it. And then by the time you're actually done tuning it, meaning throttle versus RPM on a blower setup, then that becomes a nightmare. Whereas a turbo kit, If you have some kind of programmable deal or a scramble button where you can just be on, you know, let's say 
uh, 10 to 12 pounds, and then boom, you can have three to five more on a button after it hooks, control is more desirable. Now, on a GT500, specifically stick shift, 13 to 14 GT500s, which is the only thing I could talk about because that's what I know, a stick shift 1100 horsepower car is useless. It's useless. The power is not useful. The three-link setup with a drag radial, even on a decent concrete road, 1100 wheel is pretty goddamn useless. You know what's perfect? About 900. 900 to 1000, it seems to be a really nice area. But 1100 on a TVS, it borderline blazes the tire. And the only time it's actually decent is at a track with sticky rubber and then your driving style is totally different if you're a gt500 owner that has an 1100 horsepower 13 to 14 gt500 you're not dig racing on the street you're not dig racing nobody on the street the thing just blazes tire it's useless it you're going to get beat by 800 horsepower cars because your car is just going to blaze tire first second third and maybe the three four shift will be a little on the sketchy side then when you take that exact same car to the track you're going to figure out that first gear launching on that car is very difficult unless you have a bias ply, a slipper clutch, some kind of mechanism to slide the clutch in instead of just slamming it in. Or you got to just hope that the bias ply and everything on one glory pass gets you what you need to do. So it's not that easy to just say this power at this level, you should go turbo. Typically, centrifugals on a S550 or even a S197 Mustang are more desirable on the street because they hit hard up top. Jeremiah Camp's car is a great example. If you see the intro to that video, every video that I put up there, that's Jeremiah Camp's car. It's a Paxton and it makes probably 900 rear wheel horsepower and I could do a one-two shift not blaze the tire but the moment that thing hooks it just freight trains and keeps pulling and pulling and pulling that car is a perfect roll car that car would not be a good dick car it does not hit hard enough down low so it all depends on what you want to do what do you want to do the vast majority of customers that i have in my list at lund racing are roll customers not many people dig race anymore it is very popular arizona LA, um, Texas, and some of Florida, a two roll race. Not a lot of people dig race. And the customer base, you kind of have to cater towards them. Where you have some guys like Eric Vega uh, and, and Rami and all these and a bunch of other people that do dig racing specifically, those cars are auto cars or they're stick cars that understand what can happen with stick shift racing, a bias ply, and blower stuff. Rami just experienced the knock sensors go ape shit on a hit when the blower rattled everything, everything hit everywhere, and the knock sensors went fuck you, and he actually suffered 60 foot times and, um, actually 60 foot times and 8th mile times because the knock sensors hated life on the shift, they were fine. But let's be honest, not all turbo kits are just a, a plainly better. You and I both know kits that are made on the cheap side are actually more of an issue. Now, when you go turbo, it is not easy. It is actually a little more difficult because you have to dial in your boost controller. That's right. You, as the customer, have to dial things in based on the conditions of the road. So to me, any turbo car that has adjustable boost should not be even looked at by a guy that has no idea what he's doing. If you're one of these guys that relies on your tuner and your builder to do everything for you, please, 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 leave turbos somewhere else to me a turbo kit is some for someone that has advanced knowledge because you have to dial that in you can't say tuner i got a race tonight with a turbo car on the street that i've never tested at it's asphalt i have no idea what it's going to be like well are you going to get five opportunities to race that guy or one so you better hope that that setting that you have in the turbos in the turbo system right now is going to work on that street Oh, you haven't tested? Oh, you haven't done any vetting? You haven't tested a bazillion times in a, in a bazillion different situations? Turbos are probably not for you. Blower cars under 800 are generally fine. They're fine. They're, there's not that much of an issue. And if you're roll racing, you make under 1,000 horse, you could probably be fine with a turbo if you have an S550 auto car. So it's highly conditional. 
So I get these questions all the time on Patreon. What's better, a turbo or blower? And I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's such a loaded question. A centrifugal blower is wonderful for a 10 or 80 car that roll races. I would probably not opt for turbo stuff then. Do you know what I mean? I would say, well, if you got a G3R or G3X, 95 millimeter pulley, uh, ID1700s and E85 like Carlos Vergara, you could probably go threes, 60 to 130. But if you want control and you want to be able to control and ramp in your boost and have a similar 60 to 130, turbos are the way to go. But I would never say one is better than the other. I think it's conditional. Now, when it comes to drag racing, let's be honest, guys. I don't know many Mustangs with blowers, late model Mustangs. I'm talking about Coyote and up, 11 and up. I don't know many blower Coyote cars that are seriously fast. I'm saying bottom sevens, mid to bottom sevens without an insane amount of work. I think the fact that a small a small motor, the Coyote's a small motor in terms of cubic inches, yanking on a belt and relying on that lack of torque to yank on a belt to then create torque to yank on a belt to create horsepower to yank on a belt. You know what I mean? It's always chasing each other. I think that's a recipe for a not so great time. Now, turbos, free horsepower. Spool that bitch up and you have seen what the potential is on a turbo coyote. I think the potential, the ceiling is higher on a turbo application than a blower application because of the configuration of the coyote. It is a small motor that likes to rev. So generally, up you're going to you're going to perform really well up to a point and you're going to hit a barrier. You're going to hit almost like a sound barrier where no matter how much more boost you put to this car, it does not perform. You and I have seen that it takes 40 or so pounds of boost to go sub 740 in many 35 3600 pound combinations and the number is going to start with a 5 if you want to go bottom 7s high 6s 50 pounds of boost what the hell do you need to do to a coyote with a blower to generate that kind of power it's almost impossible now we're talking the high end but typically i think it's conditional it's not just a generic blah and a lot of people in the ticket system get a little frustrated because I'm going to have to write you a book, okay, of power delivery, of positive displacement supercharger power delivery, of centrifugal power delivery, of 10R80 staying up in the RPM range versus 6R80 versus dig versus roll versus concrete versus asphalt versus roll versus dig. It's just too conditional to give you a very generic blower. So if I was to be very generic, I would say turbos are better than blowers right? I would say that. Turbos are better than blowers if I was very generic. But can you perform extremely well with the proper supercharged setup for the proper use case? Absolutely. And people like Carlos Vergara and many of my customers on Lund Racing in the ticket system have optimized their blower cars to be pretty deadly roll race cars on stock motors, stock cams, fuel system E85, and they live in the fours and threes. But when it comes to dig stuff, everything I've just said goes out the window. Thanks for letting me uh, talk for a little bit, but I I know a lot of people just have a very generic blase answer, but it is just way too conditional to get into. And you have to basically tell me what you're going to do with this vehicle. Because if I was outlining your build, and that's what you pay me for on Patreon. If you're on Patreon, and you want me to try to help you guide your build, you're going to have to tell me what you want to do specifically. You can't be one of these guys that says, I want a daily 1,000, 1,100 horsepower car. That's stupid. Get it out of your fucking head. Get it out of your head right now. Daily 1,100, get it the fuck out of your head. It's fucking stupid. Daily to me means turn it on every day, be in traffic for 45 minutes, go to work, go grocery shopping, do everything, and then at any moment, you can just turn it up and make 1100 If it exists, it's an insanely expensive setup. 
and unreliable because I don't know of any turbo kit out there that I know of that you can daily and have it not come apart at the seams one way or another. We'll talk about that. Get your comments, questions, and concerns. What do you think? Turbos or blower? What are you doing? Are you roll racing? Are you dig racing? What's better for your application? What have been your have you gone from blower to turbo and regretted it? Have you even gone from turbo to blower and regretted it? We'll talk about it. So uh, let's go all the way to the top. Rudy Bukala said, that's the predicament I'm in. I blew up my blower and going to ditch it looking for well over a thousand horsepower. I would like more control as well. If control is your desire, it's tough to beat it's tough to be turbo stuff but this is unfortunately the thought process that the broke ass coyote guy does he gets the cheapest turbo the cheapest controller the cheapest fuel system everything is cheap and then their turbo experience is cheap then they go ahead and go to the meet and say i regret going turbo because turbos didn't work out for me but they went cheap with everything. If you go cheap with everything, your experience is gonna be insanely bad. Like there's other people that say that ESS kit is bottom of the barrel. Are you fucking psycho? Install a Vortec kit, go ahead. I, I implore you to talk to the shops that have installed these kits and have seen them perform and they've lasted. I've installed the Vortec kit on a car. I've installed an ESS kit on the same car. I've actually done it. Fuck installing a Paxson and Vortec kit on a car. I would much rather install an ESS kit. Uh, A fancy boost controller like an AMS 2000 is amazing, but you really need to know what you're doing. Uh, Road cone was low seven, I believe, with a 3A Whipple. He just went turbos. He didn't go like 730. No way. He probably went 750 or 76. I don't know if he went 730. And then wasn't it standalone? Wasn't it standalone? What are we talking here? What what, what are you talking about here? Just like Hondas, all fast ones have turbo setups. Same principle. Auto Mafia, I don't care. I don't care. If you want to put a single turbo kit from your exhaust plumbed out the side and a big pipe going out the front, bro, have at it. Have at it. Um... Good evening. Sorry I'm late. Just checking in. I see more blower kits for sale than turbo kits. Um, I found this video on accident. I have a pushrod Dart 347. Yodis are cool, but will never sound as good as a pushrod. No Larry Parker, but they'll be quicker than pushrods generally without any modifications. You can't refute that. A good turbo kit with a bad controller is also useless, as Carter's TV. You need to ramp in a controller by mile an hour and a ton of testing, different surfaces, and weather. The fastest guys test in the cold weather. Don't get me wrong, I love my blower combo and put it together myself, but I can't ramp and boost on a TVS like you mentioned and be able to run a variety of surfaces stick shift. Exactly. If you're a stick shift guy, a TVS is fun at 800 horse. You're not going to blow the tires off on a shift. You're not going to launch. You can control it, and it's going to be fine, generally, with a drag radio or a bias ply. The moment you make a 1,000 with it, it's the most useless setup ever. And that's why I don't think I want to go ahead and um, make over 900 on a ZR1. Because what do you need to put on a ZR1 to make it hook at 1,000? Double R's or a ET Street R, a 335 ET Street R on an 18-inch rim if you want to keep the brakes. I don't, I, I, I don't want to do that. And then it depends on the surface. Florida doesn't have great surfaces. Fidel, are you the guy from um, Santa Domingo? Is that, is that who it is? Um, when, you're, when your wife's boyfriend, ZR1, blows you off in the weeds, that's when you know it's time to go turbo. Aldo has, a potential to run the, Aldo has potential to run the same. He'll be back out. Should I go supercharger or procharger? APOC says, daily 1,000 horsepower, get a Bugatti, check maintenance, and cost on them. Sloth says, I just want to stick nine second six of Coyote with the TVS. I'm stuck 600, 700 on TVS is dailyable. What do you think? Yes. 600 to 700 is dailyable. 800 is dailyable if you have E85 readily available. But this crazy 1,100 bullshit and up, get that shit out of your head. What's up, Chuck? How you doing, brother? Says, buy once, cry once. I went from Century to Twin Turbo Setup. Six months later, I got myself a Gen 3R and live a happy life now. Sam 5.0 has about a thousand horsepower 
stick shift TVS Gen 1 Illuminator. You want to talk about cookie cutter. It's just going to do what it does. Illuminator Gen 3R T56 410s or 373s. That is the that is so much fun. I will have a stick shift S197 again. That is not a GT500. That GT500 to me, if I bring it down to 800, ah, the problem with that GT500 is it's got a roll cage. It's got a Tick Vision anti-roll bar. It's got an ice tank. It's a race car. And it's just not desirable to me to drive around. It just more things can go wrong with it than it, they're than it worth really fucking with driving it a lot. Fluid kid, I'm switch. My fluid kid is switching to another local lung guy. Oh, you're going to another kit? Yeah, look, your fluid kit served you for a long time. There's no, there's nothing wrong with upgrading. Papa the Admiral says I chose VMP from a Gen One because I thought it was simpler setup with less kinks to be worked out in the end compared to turbos or other style blowers. That's the other thing. If you want simple, it doesn't get that much. If you want simple and reliable, it doesn't get much better than a TVS setup. I know you guys say, what about Whipple? I don't care. I know that the OEMs, listen up, kiddos, the OEMs use Eaton rotor packs. I don't see any Hellcat. I don't see any Chevy. I don't see any Ford using Whipple rotor packs or blowers stock on their vehicles. Why do you think that is? Is it just a contracting thing? Or is it because Eaton is an industrial company? Eaton doesn't just make supercharger uh, of rotor packs. They make industrial air pump rotor systems, gearboxes. They're an industrial level engineering company. Nothing against Whipple, but if you want a 500 cubic inch power boat, sure, put a Whipple on it. But when I'm talking about what the OEMs use on their cars for reliability reasons they use rotor packs from a manufacturer that has an industrial background every uh the cobra i think has an eaten um is is the cobra let let's let's decompile that how many ford specific superchargers from the factory came with an Eaton rotor pack. Was the Cobra an Eaton rotor pack? Let me look it up. Cobra, Cobra, lower Eaton rotor pack. Um, I don't know. Like is the, is the, uh, or is it a Borg? Uh, who, who made that blower? That is interesting. Oh, it is. Yes, it's an Eaton blower. 96 to 2. It's okay. So Cobras had an Eaton blower. Uh, let's do that. Let, let, let's talk some shit. L Cobras had an Eaton blower. Then what else had an Eaton blower? Or Eaton rotor pack. Uh, Cobra is Eaton. Eaton probably has way more R&D than Whipple does by far. See, a lot of people rah-rah Whipple because Whipple does a good job of giving giving uh, uh blowers to cross dressers to promote this shit you know cool cool story <laughs> like if you want to if you want to take your opinion from someone that wears a, a dress hey man all good i'd rather get the shit i'd rather get the shit from a industrial company eaton is absolutely huge to uh wing w stay on topic please stay on topic we are now talking eaton I'll say your question, but we're talking Eaton. Hey, yo, at 10 or 80 football time, PBH trend, blah, blah, blah. Good upgrade to help the tranny last longer. P.S. We can still say tranny. Ghost watcher, Uncle Tom, Viper, fun. <laughs> that's good. 10 or 80 PBH trans cooler? Yeah, that's a good upgrade. Look, keeping the trans cool in any capacity is only going to help it live a long life. And Garrett for turbo. Right. So the, 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 um, Thanks for your help and time. Ian Martha. Hey, Ian Martha, you got it. Hey, Ian, Ian am, I, am I tuning your car? I, I didn't see your, no, your, your uh, number or your name come up in the ticket system. So, Cobra, Lightning. Um, Cobra, Lightning. All GT500. All Roush. Meaning every single Roush car that was sold through Ford 
came with an Eaton supercharger from the M190 to the 1.9 to the 2.3 to the 2.6. Eaton is an engineering firm. Nothing against Whipple. But if you want to have a guy in a dress tell you that's better than Eaton, take, take his word for it. I don't care. But I come from the industrial world. I've seen Eaton products, gearboxes, and blower and rotor packs on industrial equipment in power plants, kicking ass 24-7, reciprocating all day long. The Ford GT had an Eaton. Patrick Lynch says, Lightning Cobra, GT500, Ford GT, all ran Eaton. They were all heat-soaking units. Absolutely. But it was a reliable setup. So we're talking about reliability. Now, Ian, you didn't get Nardi. Nardi does not tune nardi is a customer service representative nardi's going to ask you questions nardi's going to make sure that you're on the up and up then he hands you off to a tuner and it'll say calibrator and you will know who it is so i'm talking about reliable so if you want a reliable power plant it doesn't get more reliable than what the oems use and the oems use eaton rotor systems eaton so if you want a reliable car, a TVS, that's why I love the Roush 2.3. The Roush 2.3, in my opinion, whips up fast, gets up on boost, is reliable, generally does not have many issues with the rotors rubbing or anything like that. Uh, distributors, someone sent me a Eaton uh, Supercharger Distributors, accept all cookies. Uh, it doesn't say. Oh, Okay. Perfect. Let's look at who distributes Eaton Superchargers. Thank you very much, AJ. AJ, I love you. In the middle of the show, send me an email, and we're going to have a graphic up. Now, I'm just talking about reliable. I'm not talking about anything else but reliable. So he sent me this, and these are the people that use their rotor systems according to their website. Uh, accept all cookies. So, oh, my Lord. Wow. Okay. Magnuson, Edelbrock, Harrop, Roush, and Skoll. Um, typical applications by engine. Audi, BMW, Dodge Ram uses Edelbrock, Harrop, Magnuson, and that's uh, Ford everywhere. General Motors, Holden, Jeep, Lexus, Mazda, Mini, Subaru, Toyota. It says generic. So you're telling me all these manufacturers use Eaton products. Okay. There you go. So I'm just talking about reliable, nothing against Whippa because you idiots like to hear dumb shit. I'm just saying, if you want something to last a while, use who the OEMs use. Eaton now has a 3200. They do. That's going to be interesting how all that goes to see if it actually, if a manufacturer, boy, oh, Chuck, could you imagine if you just recently got out of the TVS game? <gasps> Could you imagine if you just got out of the TVS game and Eaton says, oh, by the way, we have a revised rotor pack that we think is going to do well. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's going to be interesting. Skull is supercharges online. Thank you very much. I'd like a supercharger, but heat management would be a priority. Again, your supercharged car at 120 IAT is not an issue. I don't know of any supercharged car at wide open throttle that makes over 120 IAT at 10 PSI. Now, 20, 30 PSI? Oh, shit, yeah. It's going to be hot, hot. A centrifugal will not. That's the other thing. A centrifugal supercharger with an air-to-air -air intercooler that's very efficient, that's aftermarket, if you configure it properly, can absolutely make big power. But with turbo stuff... Air-to-air -air has its limitations. Not that you can't live on an air-to-air, -air, but you might have to live with 150, 160, 170 IATs on an air-to-air -air setup with big boy boost. Or if you're willing to get after it, now you got to fuck with air-to-water intercooler. Ice. You, and you won't be legal for many of these classes. Many of these classes don't allow air-to-water inter intercoolers. We're talking certain classes say you got to be air-to-air. If you're running meth, you can't be air to water. So, guys, you understand, you just don't go turbo willy-nilly. Street guys, sure. But street guys 
Twin turbo, air to air, 11, 12, 1300 horse. I don't think you're going to have an issue. Once you get to the big boy territory, now you're going to start, now you're going to start talking about meth, air to water, and a whole bunch of other shit that'll even more complicate the setup. Heat management happens in all levels of supercharging or turbocharging. You will always have heat issues. You will always have to mitigate the heat, the air coming into the engine, whether it's blower or turbo. So don't just think turbos are better because they have lower IATs. Not generally. You still have to mitigate some of the air. Show me. Like Pro Charger. Yes, Pro Chargers have the worst IAT issues. Ask Fidel. Guys, have as an F1. IAT is 180 fucking 190. He has to spray a hose of meth down the throat of the uh, of the intake so that the IATs don't become an issue. You got to mitigate the air temps eventually. Since we're talking superchargers, can we get right in the bitch? Right in the bitch. Have you seen any hair up TVS 2650 on Coyotes? No. Petition to bring back the E2300 rotor packs, aka the king daddy of daily driven boosted setups. In my opinion, it is the best under 800 horsepower boosted setup by far uh okay ben callum is telling me he's having uh, motor issues uh brett runs air to air what's the gray goose got same plasma man air to water but i believe he's running 100 percent meth you understand we are not running 100 percent meth m1 fuel so his i so his air so his egts are probably a little lower uh, is there a go to is there a go to air to water intercooler option? No, Phil Fez, you're gonna have to go and figure that out yourself, just like everyone else did. <clears throat> High seas, Paul and Cindy. Okay, says Alex, you didn't have another block go bad at you one point. Yes, I did. I had a rotor pack rub. Absolutely, I'm not gonna lie about that. They took care of it. I sent it out to Greg. Greg ported it. No issues. You don't think Whipple has had rotors rub at one point? Oh. So basically, on a daily setup, supercharger with an Eaton rotor pack is king. Absolutely. The OEMs use that. If you're talking daily, something you drive every day, something you intend on putting 100,000 miles on daily, Eaton rotor pack for sure. Uh, Chuck says, funny story. I think X275 allows using factory manifold with intercooler and run M1 if vehicle came with intercooler from the factory. Riley Neufeld says, is the BCM locked with a LUN tune? Yes. Everything's locked because the body control module is accessed through the OBD2 port. Um, so you're going to have to just use the vehicle ID. Ask your tuner for your vehicle ID. You can then use Forescan and input the user OS, and you should be able to access the seat belts and all the other bullshit. Um, Latest fuck, going to catch a replay, says Jack Stan. Jack said Jeeper. Can't confirm. Pro Charger IATs were butt cheeks, bro. IAT, I love people that think ProCharge is a good company. Like, those people make me fucking laugh. Would I would I be causing issues trying to put a Roush 2.3 on my 350? Boy, you'd have to make... I mean, the knock sensors are probably not going to be happy. It makes a lot of nut down low. Hey, yo. Um, you'd have to have Octane. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to see that on pump gas, to be honest with you. Who needs a wife gone? I have arrived. Says, Juice Man, I did it. OJ. Um, Eddie... Freiburg says, hey, Alex, can a 10 already live a long life, 650 to 700 horsepower, just looking to do an ESS kit and stay on pump gas? It's eventually going to fuck up, Eddie. Even NA, the 10 R80 rears its ugly head with valve body issues, clutch issues, uh, skip shift issues. No matter what you do, there's a reason there's lawsuits. There's a reason there's been buybacks. There's a reason there's class action lawsuits on 10 R80 transmissions. <clears throat> Alex with a dual bap on a 350-85 what's the most PSI we could push 10 or 11 I wouldn't go past that what's your opinion on waste getting boost controllers on sentry setups stupid as shit dumb dumb as fuck don't do it don't ask me why I just have a bazillion data points showing how stupid that is how bad is the lag on a turbo coyote stick depends on the turbo size depends on everything it depends on everything it's not again it is not a a blanket statement to say, well, the turbo lag is no. If your turbos are small, like twin fifty fives or something, it's probably no lag or a minimal lag. So I wouldn't really just say, oh yeah, here you go, it's this much lag. I've heard firsthand reports of multiple three eights rubbing on initial startups and GT five hundreds. Dodge guys don't fuck with Whipple, right? How many Dodge guys you see fucking heavy with Whipple stuff? 
Dodge guys don't like Whipple. Dodge guys like the fucking Hellcat shit. Dodge guys like that fucking regular Hellcat shit. Chevy guys don't like... What is in the GM world that prevents people from going Whipple? Why don't GM guys go Whipple? Every GM guy gets a Kong ported CTSV blower, Kong ported ZR1 blower, or a 2650 Kong. All are 20, all are Eaton rotor pack deals. So why don't Chevy guys fuck with Whipple heavy? I don't know. Forescan or Forescan? Didn't Cletus just ice his blower into rotor rub? Uh, no. I think that's his motor. Chuck says, do the thermostat bypass and Michigan Man's trans cooler for 10 R temps are mint. Okay. People are think that Pro Chargers are good because those Hicks from Street Outlaws were sponsored by them and would name drop every episode. Guys, look at Street Outlaws as a series of commercials. You're now going to see guys run Coyotes. Guess what Coyotes are going in them? Texas Speed shit-ass Coyotes. Anytime anyone tells me, Alex, what do you think about the Texas Speed Motors? I'm like, I'd rather you get an Illuminator. Have you seen how Illuminators are built? Have you seen the actual process of an Illuminator getting put together at Ford, at PAS, Performance Assembly Solutions? That is OEM quality build. OEM quality build. You think the guys at Texas Speed have that kind of process? Bro. So what's going to happen is everyone on um, Street Outlaws is going to just have their hand out. Whoever gives them shit, they promote it, say it's the best shit. If it blows up, they're not going to tell you. They're not going to tell you blew up. They're sponsored. They're for sale. That's the problem when you get sponsored. See, be very careful of who you believe out there. Because people that get sponsorships, motor builds, blowers, dancing. Any artists out there want to be an artist and want to stay a star and don't want to, and want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the videos, all on the record, dancing. All those guys are for sale and have zero backbone, zero credibility. Zero. I don't listen to anyone that has a full sponsorship of anything and take their word as solid. I run what works. <clears throat> Park Performance says, what's up, Alex? What's a, what's good chat? Just leaving the shop. Going to listen on my way home. Breaking in the ventures. Clutch on a 350. Uh, Oliver says, they put cigarette ash in the motor. Who builds Garrett Cletus's Coyote? <laughs> I don't know. If it blows up, that's racing. A track hawk guy tried a Whipple, then took out the screws and used it as an intercooler case for a turbo setup. Great opinion. Great idea, in my opinion. Those crank-mounted F3R Pro Chargers are pretty wicked on a big block. <laughs> Did you just say F3R? You're naming 3,000 horsepower setups. Uh... <laughs> Oh, Oliver Bryan, you're funny. Ray Ray says, Illuminator 12.1 for Gen 3 turbo setup. Absolutely. Keep the boost moderate. 13, 14 PSI. That bitch will make 1,000. Be the happiest thing ever. You should get into the B58s. No, thank you. I'm good. I, I don't ever want... It just doesn't interest me. I, I look at them and I don't care. There's plenty of guys that are doing it. And this is... I understand why you guys want to do it. Apparently, the Street Alpha podcast that I did with uh, Tukes... Is, is still going like it's still like weirdly being seen like it, it got hot it leveled out then it got hot again and i'm like what's going on so the way i spoke about the coyote the way i spoke about and again i'm not the most knowledgeable no 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 but i can convey the information to the dum dumb pretty well people from other platforms look at that and go how come there isn't a guy like that with our platform, right? The the top Hellcat guy is probably like, man, this be hot as fuck, man, shit. 
Man, oh, this nigga hot as fucking oh, shit, man. Oh, this oh, nigga oh, got oh, my oh, You oh, call me? Oh, you call don't do that. Oh, you call oh, don't do that. Oh, oh, I do. I, I just do burn off whenever oh, I want. Oh, I like, oh, damn, yeah, you, you, you finna slide on it. You know, they, they, it's not a good representation of what the platform could be. So a lot of people go, why can't we have a guy in our platform that speaks like that? That speaks with intimate knowledge. Speaks plain English. I can understand what he's saying. So there are Corvette guys that probably wish they had a guy like that. They're probably, uh, there's, guys, there's knowledgeable guys in every field. But the problem is they can't relay the information like someone like me can. And I'm not interested in going into every single platform, trying to learn everything about it, and becoming an expert on every single platform. I'm not super knowledgeable on pushrod stuff, but I've dabbled in it enough to know what to get after and enough to know when to sell that motherfucker, okay? I didn't want to do all that work because I knew it was going to be a lot of labor and the results are not guaranteed. But when it comes to Coyote, I have intimate knowledge of the inner workings of the Coyote. I know which engine shops suck. I know which ones don't. And I can at least guide you towards the path of least resistance. Alex, Turbo SF50 here. What suspension setup do you recommend? Steeda or UPR? Um, Dynamite, if you're thinking kits, and it's real tough to say kits. Kits are something that is okay, but the best stuff is custom. Let's decompile that. <clears throat> there is no such thing as an off-the-shelf seven-second setup. If you get an Aldo kit, it can fit your car, but based on testing, results, desired results, and outcomes, you might have to modify the kit. Maybe you need a better intercooler. Maybe you need a better puke tank. Maybe you need a better turbo setup. Maybe you need to have different weight. You, who knows? Fuel system and fuel link. That also has to get vetted. That also has to get looked at. The injectors are going to be ID 2600s or something really fucking stupid and big. Suspension setup. There is no one company you can just buy a seven second capable suspension setup tonight. You're going to have to do mix matching. You're going to have to do this shock, this strut, this spring. When kits are around, it's good enough. But it's not the best. Kits are kits for a reason. It's just to get sold. So if I was to say someone that's running in the high eights and slower, you can get away with a Steeda Stop the Hop kit. You can get away with Viking coilovers and Viking rears. You can get away with a, a 305 45 17 or a 315 50 17 and 20 pounds of boost, ramp it in whichever the way you want, and you're gonna be in the eights and nines, no problem. The problem comes when you have to refine that. See, a lot of people looked at the Lunds, Brett LaSalas of the world, Jim Brahms, uh, Chris Marillo, Marillo, all the guys that are fast. And they go, what kit do they have? What mods are on their motor? When you understand they have gone through many different iterations of that setup to reach that desired outcome. It is not a kit. So when you drop off your car at a builder, right? Hey, I want to make an eight second car. And if the builder goes, I'd like a stop to hop kit. I'd like an Aldo kit. I'd like a four innovations level three. I'd like this, a, a kit. Why did you, why didn't you do that? Why do you need a builder to do that shit for you? No, the builder has seen stuff work and not work and go, Hey, I recommend this intercooler. We're going to have to do some custom piping. I recommend this hot side. I recommend these turbos. They're, they're going to mount on this kit, but we have to touch this up, move this over here, move that there, da 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 Custom stuff is the difference between run-of-the-mill average eight-second cars and Billy Badass mid to low seven-second and high six-second cars. It's just that, 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 that custom touch is what brings it to the next level. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> Should I do it? Okay.
You want suspension settings from that guy? Expect your car to do this. Is that cool? You, you guys think this is cool? Right? Cool picture. But when that sucker came down, it fucked everything up. So, you want suspension settings from a guy that has never gone quicker than 890? Expect results like that. Once he got on the, on the, on the, on the system, the car ran better and better and better. Um, that Gen 1 just ran the same eighth as my car did with a Whipple stock kit. That thing is moving. Good shit, Alex. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I love the truth. Please don't stop. I'm still on Vikings. Rear wheel. Well, uh, a lot of roll cars have stock shocks and struts. They use the boost controller. If you're not dig racing, suspension kit might be useless. You're not wrong, Carter. See, a lot of the guys that roll race and make a living building cars that roll race don't necessarily have to dive into the suspension stuff. The moment they go to the track, they do dumb shit like that. And again, I'm not, I'm not indicting him. It's the suspension guy that was giving him dumb settings. And I'm like, bro, you don't, you don't want that. You want to stuff your tire on the wheel well? You want, thing, you, you want things loose? You want all four tires off the ground and come down and wreck your shit? Keep listening to people that put their name on already done parts, but sell them as kits. Guy knows nothing. The fast guys, the fast guys don't run any of that shit. Um, hey, Alex, were the previous Grey Goose Motors also assembled the DeWalt tools? <laughs> Ever since the motors were assembled with Milwaukee tools, it's the same company. They were fine. Uh, dude already dialing the phone. Let him, let him dial. I'm not talking shit on him. I'm talking shit on his suspension boy. Um, and we did the same thing. Guys, we did the same thing. We learned. See, y'all ought to think Lund Racing for doing the fucking bumper dragging all four wheels off the ground wheelie because we learned what not to do. So now when we give you suspension settings on an S550, it's based off of what we did and the mistakes we made. Everyone that goes fast makes that mistake. Everyone that goes fast makes, but now if you've made that mistake after Lund made the mistake and guided you to suspension settings. Something went wrong somewhere. Uh, Alex, do you recommend quiet gears on ESS? It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. What, what, why would I recommend quiet gears? What, what, what does it matter? Um, they put it on the flyer for a reason. Exactly. Uh, the S650 on the streets don't... S650 on the streets don't run. They hide behind cars. Okay. I have an opportunity to pick up a 5.2 XS for 3,000 more than a Gen 3 NA. Illuminator. You think it's worth it? It will go boosted eventually. Sure. If it's, is it used or new? I have stock springs and ran a 10.0 with a manual. How much power would I be making around 120 millimeter pulley to start out with a Gen 3 Lunchoon? 650. 650. 120 millimeter pulley, auto manual, 10 or 11 pounds of boost, 650 if you have free flowing exhaust and good octane. Ratwork says 11 GT500. Is it worthwhile to swap the Trinity blower from a 13 to 14 or jump to an aftermarket blower? The stock blower from a 13 to 14 is all you need, sir. The aesthetic says if I'm at 1,000 verbal horsepower, should I consider 315s over a 305? What do you want to do? I'm done telling people yes or no. What do you want to do? Are you roll racing? Are you dig racing? What is the case use for the car? Um, roll race guys like stock stuff with weights. Look under the rear of the trunk if you're locking in. His hustle, in fact, is the hook. Guys, set up the suspension, set up like Forza. Alex, I know I keep asking, but I don't know if you replied to my question. If you were doing a nine second stick TVS Coyote combo, would you do a jet? Oh, sloth. Did you ever even watch my videos? Did you watch my videos? My Gen 1 was a 10-1 car with basic shit. I would literally copy that setup just with more boost. Um, Alex, I've noticed 
have you noticed parts houses are starting to advertise catless headers again? No, Andy Ali, I have not seen that. Milwaukee DeWalt are not the same company. According to everyone that I know says they're the exact same company. The senior get hurt when he took flight. His back hurt, he said. Um, when do you reckon Lund Fuel Sensor is coming? Okay, Flex Fuel Tunes are fucking stupid. Flex Logic is stupid. You're never going to hear me advocate for Flex anything. I think Flex is fucking stupid. And if you're waiting for a Flex Fuel Sensor, you're fucking stupid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck about Flex. Flex is stupid. If you have E85 in your fucking area, run E85. Oh, wait a minute. Who cares? It's 2024. We've somehow gotten along without any flex logic for 13 years or 12 years that Coyote's been around. Now all of a sudden we can't live without it? Grow up, please, people. Stop with this flex fuel shit. It's stupid. You know why? You know why I think it's stupid? Because everyone's stupid. Hey, I don't get it. I made 700 horsepower on E55, but then I splashed in E75 and I made 700 horsepower. Why is that? I can't wait for those questions to come in. Oh, I can't wait to hear those fucking stupid questions coming in after we offer flex tuning for people. I can't wait to hear the flex troubles. Hey, my car does cold start weird. I got the flex. I got the Lund flex sensor. I got the Lund LRX. I got the Lund hoodie. I got the Lund sneakers. I got the Lund belt. I got the Lund car. And my flex fuel sensor logic, it it, it starts kind of weird. I can't fucking wait to hear all the bullshit that comes along with flex shit. No, thank you. Fuck flex fuel. Fuck it for life. Stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. You seem stressed. (laughs) Starkey's wife's boyfriend says, you seem stressed. You need some head. I know a person who can help. Good dome is always a good time. Like, it's almost desirable at this point. Just give me dome and dip. E100 tunes coming soon. J-Max says, you're right, popping a hard wheelie, hard on everything, ECM, etc. Looks good, but you may get only one run. The aesthetic says, best suspension setup for roll racing, a thousand horsepower, Gen 2 Coyote Twin Turbo to be exact. <laughs> you go to Home Depot. You get three 50-pound sandbags. You put them in your trunk. Bada-bing, bada-boom. Hot dog water tune when? Can E85 run 20 degrees in wintertime, though? <laughs> you know, I think flex... Okay, I'll give you an example. I don't need to know what my ethanol content is if I look at my fuel trims, right? I don't care. I don't give a fuck what my ethanol content is. I turn the car on, drive for 20 miles, I look at the fuel trims long and short if my stoic is set up for e85 9.8 or so and my fuel trims are trimming in five percent fuel no problem five cool trimming out five no problem you know what's happening right now these dumb motherfuckers are putting 30 percent ethanol on 24 Mustangs. Oh, and 18 Mustangs. And 18, all Mustangs. These idiots online are now putting in more ethanol as an octane adder and saying it's all good. So a 24 Mustang, even with a Whipple tune, has a stoic value of 14.0. Now, when the fuel trims sense that it has a 30 or 35% ethanol mix in there, it trims in fuel. So let's think about what's happening mechanically. Do you think that's instant? Do you think the trimming of fuel is instant? Stupid? No. So this is what happens. You... Have a Whipple 24. You put E30 in it. 
Now the car trims in 11, 12, 13, 14 percent fuel. So a combustion event happened. It makes its way down to the O2 sensor. O2 sensor goes. <sighs> ah, let's command more fuel. Makes its way back to the next combustion event. Smells 12%. Again, 15%. And it's over and over and over and over. It is chasing its tail. But if it's trimming in 5%, no big deal. Big deal, 5%. That's the factory spec, 5%. But if it's trimming in 13, 14, 15% because you heard someone on Facebook tell you it's okay to run E30. E40. It's good. Let the fuel system trim it in. Just trim it in. Let it trim it in. I'm running E30. What does it matter? You gotta watch. I don't think it's a big deal to run E40 on my shit. Go ahead. Listen to the dickheads on Facebook. Go. Leave. Do your shit. Hey, um, motor's making a bit of a weird sound, Alex. Oh. Oh. Wait. Did, did you say... Did you say the motor is making a bit of a weird sound? Oh, I don't got Sasso. I thought I had Sasso. I thought I had Sasso here. Swankster, Deleter, Raptor, Hit Him Up, Eating, Diddy, Shug, Turvy, Bicho, Price is Right. Hello. No, I don't have Sasso. What's that smell? Oh, it's, it smells like Sasso. Because you stupid motherfuckers. Oh, this smells like jelly beans. Heard somebody say. <laughs> Splash a little ethanol in there. It's all good. So now, what's up, John Lund? Hey, John, I'm just telling people how flex tunes are fucking stupid, can bust or not. Why? Because people are stupid. I, I am black-pilled. I can look on my E85 stoic tune, look at the fucking fuel trims, and it's within 3 or 4%. I'm good. But what's going to happen when you have canned flex? And this is what people will do. Well, let me splash a little more E85 in there. See what happens. Hey, it only made one more horsepower. Can you make my ethanol tune more aggressive? Alex, can you make my flex tune add more timing when it's E72 as opposed to E65? I can only find E65 in my area. But if I splash in E85 from ethanol 1R, I want 23 degrees of timing. No. <laughs> oh no! See, we we can't have that. We, <laughs> how 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 have you been a member for so long and I don't know about it? But E40 tells me when to go. Brown, all that other sugar coated and watered down. I'm from the bay where we happy and go dumb. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't look forward to dealing with it. No, thank you. How's Alex tonight? Alex is Alex is telling people not to put Alex is telling people not to do flex shit. Alex is trying to help people um, understand that blower versus turbo is not just a right or wrong thing. It's a hundred percent conditional. Alex is trying to get get get. Um, have you and people before? <laughs> Look, I'm not reading any more of that shit. I thought the three psi turbo kits for the S650 were dumb. You thought they wouldn't try an E30 mix? Fool me twice. Ain't gonna fool me again. <laughs> I love it. George Bush fooled me twice. I need to make that a sound clip. George Bush fool me. Fool me twice. There's a saying we say down in Texas. Fool me one. There's an old. Fool me, we can't get fooled again. You stupid ass motherfucker. You stupid ass motherfucker. That those are S650 guys. Hey guys, three PSI. What isn't gonna hurt it? What's the big deal? 
It's not that big of a deal. Oh, senior. Apparently, people here... Remember the rap song, John Lund, that you played at World Cup? When we were going to World Cup, and you were like... It was a Lil John song. It's about fucking shit up. Is it like, get out of your mind? Or It was like a song that you were like... You get amped up to get to like to go racing, and uh, you you played it in the F four fifty, and everyone wants to know what the song is, and I don't know what it is. I am old. I make my own rap song. Ask out. <laughs> Senior basically off the cuff, acapella, off the dome, freestyled a complete rap song for about an hour <laughs> on our way to Texas two K. Um, you like to rock out to a certain rap song we heard. What's your favorite Lil John song? Rebecca Starkey says, if you want flex tunes, I can take care of it for you. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, I love it. What what is it called? Yeah, it's um it's a Lil John song. And it was like it was it sounded like get out of your mind, but it wasn't get out of your mind. Um, and it's not turned down for what it's not one of the commercially popular songs. It's one of those weird ones. That's like on the B side. See, y'all don't know what a B side is. You know, when there was tape players, you should flip it to the B side. And that's the, the, the filler songs. When the Macchiato says, what's up, Alex? What's up with that? See, now says, how long till the start? <laughs> Holly or Cobra, little John, what you going to do? No, it's not any of the commercial. You mean out of your mind? I don't think it's out of your mind. It's not out of your mind. <laughs> I don't think it's out of your mind. Because there was another one. There we go. Okay, I got to stop it because I'll get copyrighted. Is it that one? I can't imagine it's that one. It didn't sound familiar. It sounded like something else. Sounds like Alex is telling stories. Uh, Calf Flex Tune when John raps Sugar Hill Gang for sure. I already ordered my Flex Tune. The one that samples Ozzy? No. Uh, throw it up. Three Six Mafia? No. B side? Whole lot of gang shit. Uh, that's the name of the song. Wait, what's the name of the song? Hoosier? Bia Bia? No, it's not Bia Bia. It's not Bia Bia. I know Bia Bia. It's not Bia Bia. I know that song. I got the. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, uh, I got the lethal beef <laughs> beef cake luster. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Oh, my God. It's that one. Oh, it's out of your mind? Okay. They said it's out of your mind. Okay, cool. So it's uh, this. Yes, break it, you just get out of your mind. Okay, I guess it's that one. I can't play too long because they will literally mute the song. Take my money away. I want to get paid for every show I make. Um, drop in the like, catch the reply tomorrow. Thank you. Throw your hood up. No, pretty sure it's throw it up. No, it's uh, out of your mind, apparently. I didn't know. I had no idea because I, I, I didn't think it was that song specifically. But yeah, he likes to rock out to that. I, I, I've never been at the garage or at the shop when Senior's wrenching on the Grey Goose listening to music. Apparently, he listens a little bit to every to, to a little bit of everything. So that's that. But yeah, um... Like, the Flex Tune stuff to me is just for convenience. And I think the same reason we got rid of the Flex Tune is the same reason we shouldn't offer Flex Tuning, even if it's CAN bus or not. The learning on the O2 side was difficult because people are stupid. And if there was a air leak introduced, it would skew things. Wait a minute. If the CAN bus stuff, okay, let, let, let's take this. Let, 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 let's really dive into this, right? Let's say the flex fuel logic through the CAN bus tests the ethanol percentage. What happens when you have high water content, but the ethanol in that tank is still testing at 85%. You understand? Not because they mixed it with hot dog water, 15% or 20% or 30%, but let's say the, the hygroscopic nature of the ethanol allows it to bring in moisture. The ethanol tester might say 
It's the ethanol in the tank is 85%. The ethanol. But there is no way of knowing if it has a high water content or not. So that could be another byproduct. And maybe Chevy guys have gotten around that somehow. Or maybe the sensor is so smart that it goes, oh, no, that's definitely not. That's what. That's water. What? Who knows? Um, da, 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 Steely Dan. We will offer flex tuning when Grey Goose smacks a six forty nine point nine nine. Uh, quarter mile rap battle. Alex versus John. He's got me. He just agreed because he doesn't want to know. No, no. When is Lund gonna offer flex tuning again? Just got my flex sensor for my twenty twenty four and need to be tuned. I need to watch John listen to some UGK. Did Boom Chat dude copyright last episode? Yes, the Bumba Clock guy. The M dot R copyrighted. I had to mute it to get paid. They literally blocked any earnings. I had to mute it the next day to get some money back. Um, 560 likes and 560 people, 280 likes. I stopped asking you guys to like the show because I know there's 300 of you that don't even care to hit the like button. So that means there's 200 solid motherfuckers. So there's 295 solid motherfuckers that want to see me grow there's about three 200 pieces of shit that listen on the side don't want to see me grow they listen for, for for free shit they're not members they're not they don't ever subscribe to patreon they would never do a super chat those guys will never like the show you know when those guys like the show when they want something for free that's when they like it. Oh, Alex is giving something away. Let me hit the like button. Maybe I can get something for free. That's why I did the Patreon. Flying the helicopter. You're flying with John Lund. Get out of your mind. Do you guys offer methanol tune as a fuel if I take full responsibility? L6F, if you have ID2600, a mechanical fuel pump, and you want to run a 70-30 mix, sure. If you have LU47s and a BAP, on an NA car and you want to run full M1, we're probably not going to do it. Dang, patients keep coming in by the ER. Does John say the N-word in his freestyles? Never. I, never. <laughs> uh, when is Lund going to tune the 3.7 so I can run mid Never. Never. Ne Thank you. John Lund himself says, never tuning a 3.7, a 3-valve, or a 3D. By carajo. Zero once have IT issues. Just ask Alex. Track day would make it even more prominent. Yeah, I am not. Lo I the IT issues on the ZR1 are so bad that it kind of blows my mind. If you see the heat exchanger, it's whack shit. The heat exchanger on a ZR1, even the upgraded version, is whack shit. When you see the AFCO twi triple pass twin fan heat exchanger on coyotes you wonder why that can't be retrofitted into a zr1 there's just no room zr1s are terrible to work on if you want a zr1 you better have money to send it to a shop that specializes in zr1s because working on it yourself fucking sucks it's not a good car to work on it sucks member here and patreon silently watching and catching all the replays thank you roman tijarina a few of us Gen 1 guys have been finding cracked primary chain tensioners by the mating surface. The crack is straight, clean line, almost looks like it's supposed to be there. Ever heard about this? No, honestly. But an sf uh automatically sent me to this live, says Jonathan Jimenez. John Lon is cool, plus he's a military vet. I give him a pass. Uh, KA's next move is tuning for sure. Oh, God, dude. Everybody is going to attempt to tune. Everybody is going to attempt to tune. Now... Can somebody send a tune that is 70% good on people and generally make some money? Sure. But you know where the sauce is? The adjustment. The adjustment. The adjustment is where the sauce is. Car slamming the one-two shift? If the guy who sent you the file has no idea how to mitigate that or what's causing it, vaya con Dios. Car hits a 4.5 limiter on the 6R80. If the guy doesn't have the special stuff, he has no idea how to fix that. Car can't go over 180 mile an hour because it's hardwired in. 
again, a lot of people are going to realize that just because you have base files ready to go and send them out does not mean you're a tuner. When you have to then fix issues the car comes up with as the customer grows with the setup, that's when you're going to have the harsh realization that you don't know what the fuck you're doing, like at all. Lun2 19 GT switching from Vortec to ESS 3R. Why a 3R? Well, I need a whole new tune. I remember you saying all centuries tune the same. Something to that regard. Why ask? Blue Monkey, this is what you might have to do. You might have to pay a $150 revision fee because it needs tweaks. Can you use the existing Vortec tune to start it and drive it around? Yes. But you now essentially change the setup. We have a specific ESS math curve. We have specific changes for the ESS kit, especially on manuals. So you might have to pay a $150 revision fee, but if you just want to get it started in driving and check for leaks, I think you could use the same tune. Thanks for Lund for learning bruises. I'd go to Turviate over KA tune. How do I join the Lund private Facebook page? Do I need to show proof of my purchase? Yes. Um, KA said he can make a shift to go to reverse and sound crunchy. Your thoughts on the new black label selling Mustang? Don't care. Question for senior. I recently saw a 2012 boosted Grand Sport C6 square for sale with the forum sales running N-Gage and claim Lund tuning. Wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. Nobody tunes a Corvette via Lund officially. I heard JLTs change their intake names to Sex Panthers because 60% of the time they work every time. Boy, you're, you're reaching on that one. K said he can make a shift to reverse sound cruncher. You said it twice. Does Lund tune the 4GT either engine generation? Um, not in a, uh, a, a high volume capacity, no. I think if you're like a close friend of the Lunds and you have a 4GT and you drop it off one day and say, hey, tune it at your leisure, he might do it. Elver got them Instagram video joked. You spoke on the big F1X and those, but my low P1X ITs are never more than five or six above ambient. <sighs> Nuxo. You want me to prove you wrong? Go wide open throttle. When you're cruising, stupid, This not, it's not going to be five or six more degrees above ambient. Go what? Go wide open throttle. Go to 7,500 RPMs in fourth gear. And show me what your fucking IETs are then. 150. Definitely should have went G3X. Yeah, the G3R is not needed, guys. Stop buying the G3R unless you're going to run an 85 millimeter pulley. John Lund says, yep, I have tuned many older 4GTs. No new 4GTs because it's pointless. Does Lund tune methanol injection on 91 octane? Yes, if you relocate your IAT to the intake manifold, sure. Chupa Verga says 10 speed guys flexing, they shift the AK like stick cars can too. Exactly. Um, I thought you said quiet gears on a century blower helps eliminate knock issues. I never said that. I literally never said that. I never said quiet gears eliminate knock issues. The issues with the centrifugal is how the bracket is mounted. The bracket overhangs to the left or to the front. So now there's a bracket. The crank is here. And there's a bracket that sticks out this much. And, and it has a belt on it with an auxiliary pulley. And when you do a one-two shift, it does this. And it transfers that fucking harmonic to the, to, to the valley area. Making it sound like knock. And the knock sensors go, uh-uh, something's wrong. I never said a gear that is quieter on your blower will eliminate knock. Never said that. I can't lie. I usually forget to like it until you remind me. Um, thoughts on Holly EFI Factory X? It's stupid. Factory Experimental is the stupidest fucking class on the planet. They could have done something cool. But as in all NHRA fashion, they fuck it up. Factory Experimental went from being potentially cool to pro stock. It's a slow pro stock. The cars look like pro stock, except maybe they have a factory-ish body, steel roof and quarters, big fucking deal. It's pro stock all on 1985. Like it's it's not it's not cool. It's a it's a fucking uh Lenko or G Force. If you're not clutching in, 
Listen up, stick shift guys. If you're not clutching in, you're not a fucking stick shift driver. If you're not kicking the clutch between the shifts, all you're doing is moving a lever and letting the, um, what's the name of that switch? What's the name of that switch? Tell me the name of the switch. What's the name of the switch? I forget. I got too many things in my mind. I forget the name of the fucking switch. I'll wait for someone to say it. That's doing the shifting for you. Uh, boo, boo, boo. What the fuck did you do? Strain gauge. Strange gay. If you're strain ga gauging your shit, Alejandro Flores does not think you're a stick shift driver. Clutch kicking. If you're not clutch kicking, you're no different than a turbo 400 driver going click, click. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. It's H pattern. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. It's H pattern. It's at a slight angle. Fuck you. I don't care. I don't care. When I see stick shift stuff and I see motherfuckers sound like a strain gauge going down the shit, I go, I don't care. I'm going to go get popcorn. I'm going to go, I'm going to go get cheeseburger. Oh, stick shift is up. Stick shift elite is up. I'm leaving. Why? Because it's strain gauge elite. Strange gauge elite. Coming up, we got strain gauge elite coming at you. Slipper clutch class. Come on up. Slipper clutch and strain gauge elite coming up. Lanes one and two. Slipper clutch and strain gauge elite one and two. Clutch kickers. Lanes three and four. I'm watching them. Strain gauge is probably what happened in the Diddy audio. Strain your gauges. Hey, senior, have you listened to the Diddy clip? <laughs> I tried recently to watch Anchorman and thought the JLT when Paul Rudd said, don't care, don't care, don't care about Anchorman, don't care about Farrell, don't care, it's gay, he sucks. What's gayer, strain gauge or roll racing? Ooh. Ooh. No, I mean, you have to release a clutch. I think. It's at the point where there's so many nannies in the, in the stick shift elite shit that it's not stick shift anymore. And I get it, they're fast and no one's saying they're not fast. But they're also gay. We need the Coco, the monkey clip back for the strain gauge. Meek, Mill, Diddy, Gauge, float in the gears. Looking to supercharge my 2020 GT with 30,000 miles. Around 6 to 750 horsepower. Which would be better cruising for weekend car? The Roush R2650 Phase 2? Or the VMP Performance? Or the Whipple W18 5RF 3 Oh my lord. Just get the Whipple and be done with it. Slipper Clutch Class, sponsored by Texas Speed, exactly. Is it as gay as Diddy and Meek? What's gayer, strain gauge or no lift shift? A strain gauge. My 4200 is a super clutch with two piece, right? The other method is running into the limiter to roll faceplate trans, right? I get it, but when, okay. For a little while, pro mods were sh not shifting, we're, 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 the computer was shifting for them. Boo, boo, boo. Okay. Then for like a millisecond, the NHRA said, no, no, you got to shift your own gears. And the uproar it caused. We got to, we got to shift our own gears? Do you know how hard that is to nudge it forward twice? Alex, you don't get it. When you got a five second course, shut the fuck up. Six if for the shift to lockouts, some launch off of a button. Hey man, I know you probably don't want to talk about work after work, but do you ever consider talking more in depth about tuning? Fuck no. I don't want to tell you guys in depth stuff about tuning because it requires an intimate knowledge of the tuning infrastructure. It requires you to know exactly what's happening. And me talking about tuning the way Lund does it is totally different than someone that like from VMP does. Like, they have a completely different methodology of tuning than Lund does. So the way I would talk about tuning would be very generic in general. I wouldn't talk about it in specifics in terms of cam timing, in terms of spark events, in terms of um, uh, 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 cam schedules. I would never go into depth about that because, one, it's proprietary. Two, unless you know exactly what I know or what Lund knows, you won't even understand what I'm saying half the time. 
But Alex, you have to select the gear and nudge it back into drive after. That's difficult. A strain gauge is as engaging as an arcade racing game where you're shifting through the gears. What's the name? Is it cruising? Is it cruising? Cruising arcade game. Is it cruising? The one where they shift a uh, cruising arcade game shifter. Shifter. Cruising. I I'm wanting to see an outside shot of the cruising arcade game shifter. Let me see. Video's unavailable. Why is video unavailable? Let me see. Video's unavailable. Wow, all these videos are unavailable. What is this? Nintendo 64. No, I want to see arcade. Okay, shifter. That that. The launch lineup of games for any system is always a mixed what bag. The hell is happening? On the one hand, you have developers who have big. Anyway, if you ever played Cruise in the arcade game, the shifter is exactly what they use in Six Shift Elite. <laughs> Ooh, boo, boo, boo. Strain gauge. What's gayer, strain gauge class or MTD2 with a stock clutch and a shifter class? Strain gauge. Real Teal has a faceplate trans, but we still kick the clutch. Wes did it. So do we. I like it. Uh, a video about Alex tuning a carburetor. No, thank you. Uh, even though you told the details, who has the software Who has the software to make changes? Don't know what you're talking about. GTR class is the gayest of them all. A carb tuning video would get a ton of views. No, it wouldn't. No, it would not. Real Teal 93 is a bad bitch. Hell yeah. Double tap the gas for a wheelie. Exactly. Jonathan Jimenez says, hey, Alex, I'm first time here. Just finished watching Street Alpha Podcast. Jonathan Jimenez, thank you for coming here. I probably talked... A bunch of shit about flex tuning you didn't want to hear, but I kind of have to get my opinion out there because I think it's it's just setting us up for more issues. Guarantee it. I Boy, I guarantee there's going to be issues with flex tuning, even if it's sampling the fuel. You'll see. There's always some kind of issue. What's up? Uh, Evil Horror says hello. You, user unknown says Rush Rock Arcade Shifter. Was there ever a resolution when Lund Base Files were poached by the rest of the tune community? No. What resolution will there be? I mean, what do you do? You have to prove that they're yours. Good luck. You have to then... What do you do? What do you do? Nothing. Nothing. You just say, well, the adjust... Again, I can give everyone here on this chat access to the lawn tune you can tune the car once the moment you have to adjust you're done you're done i can give you a whipple 16 auto file with id 1000s and a bat and you could put in a whipple on your car i will give you the tune i'll give you the software i'll show you how to flash it and i'll walk away I bet you can't get it off the rev limiter. I bet you can't raise the rev limiter. I bet you can't make it hit the one, two shift exactly at 7,500 RPMs, one, two, two, three, and move the lockup schedule to somewhere favorable. I guarantee you cannot. The magic in tuning is the adjustment, not the base file. All right, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you thank you very much for hanging out with me for a little bit, for an hour and a half talking some shit. So today we talked about blower versus turbo. We went in depth on that. The case use is more important than just the power adder. I think it really matters what you're going to use it for as opposed to just saying which one is better. Cruising USA link sent your email. I'll watch it another time. It's at the end of the show. Then we got into flex tuning. We got into, um, fuck, we got into a little bit of everything. I talked about what flex tuning is stupid. And then we ended up with talking about how even if I gave you access to a tune, the adjusting of the tune is where the knowledge comes in. And if you don't know how to adjust the tune to, to, to achieve a desired outcome, the base file is pretty freaking useless. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you very much for hanging in there with me. I'll be back on Thursday for a little YDBT Daily. We'll talk some shit then. Uh, tomorrow, I'm free. I'm good. I'm going to take a day off. I give you five videos a week. I give you a video on Saturday. Sorry. I give you two videos on Sunday. I give you a video on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and back on Sunday. So that's five a week. So that's not that bad for this channel. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, consider becoming a Patreon member. There's good chats in there. There's 183 active pay subscribers that are in there. They're very knowledgeable. They know exactly what's going on so they can add 
to any comments that you have. I have active chats, I have introductory chats, and you have direct access to me with a Patreon link. It costs you 15 bucks a month and you support the growth of this channel. Thanks for listening. I'll see you guys on 